Protect your online privacy today at expressvpn.com slash inside. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Inside Gaming Daily for Wednesday. We did this already. We had to re-record it because <laughs> the computer messed up. But guys, it's Hump Wednesday. Get up on your chairs once more. Let's hump these technical issues away. Uh, that hurts just as much as it did the first time. I definitely pulled the muscle. Sucks to suck. Uh, today, guys, we are humping for Nintendo to please get their act together. It's 2020. They got to figure some stuff out, right, guys? Yes, they do. There's no question that Animal Crossing New Horizons has been a huge hit for Nintendo. In just a few days, it's already sold bazillions of copies, and it's been a nice, peaceful break from the collapse of society that we currently find ourselves in. Yeah, the bazillion, a technical term. We know that for a fact. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we just hope that when our food finally runs out, we'll be able to spend our last days on Earth digging up digital fossils, because you gotta keep Blathers happy. He's a real one. He's too pure for this world. He talks a lot. Yeah, so what? <laughs> yeah, just take my fossils, dude. I don't need the backstory no. on any of them. Uh-uh. Just take it. I got, I've got an island to deforest here. So yeah, in less than a week, Animal Crossing, it is a sales monster. I don't have to tell you guys. It debuted at the top of the charts in the UK. It actually outsold all previous Animal Crossing games combined over there in Japan. Also not surprising, they are crazy about Animal Crossing. In three days, it sold nearly 1.9 million copies. It's the biggest Switch game launch ever there. That's insane. Oh my god. Yeah, I think, well, it it was on you know, GameCube, which wasn't a huge system seller. So, I don't know. Mm. I think coupled with the fact that just the the Switch has just been a a monster. So, I think that's part of it, too. So, we don't know yet how much it's sold in the U.S., but it's safe to assume a lot if my Twitter feed is to be believed, which who knows how accurate that is. But, you know, seems like everyone and their grandmas are playing Animal Crossing. Yeah, so that's all good news, right? Uh, why are some people really, really mad at Animal Crossing? Because it is getting a lot of negative user reviews on Metacritic, which is weird for a franchise that is normally pretty universally beloved. Brian, you got any uh, any tips on this for us? It's because it became an Epic Game Store exclusive. No! <laughs> So yeah, this basically has to do with the game's functionality when you create multiple accounts, or to be more accurate, it's lack of functionality. So yeah, a lot of households have multiple people playing on one Switch, you know, because it's a console. But while the Switch is a hybrid console, when it comes to Animal Crossing, Nintendo's kind of treating it just like a handheld. It's weird. Well, it's weird for a lot of reasons, I'd say. So yeah, the controversy boils down to this, which is if multiple accounts are playing Animal Crossing, not all accounts are created equal, which I don't think they are super vocal about uh, initially. So like for starters, not everyone gets their own island. Everyone has to share. Apparently Tom Nook has not heard about social distancing. That's just irresponsible, dude. I mean, he is kind of like a capitalist man. I think he's waiting for it to take out the old and weak so he doesn't have to worry about them anymore. (laughs) Tom wants us all back at work by Easter. But worse than that, the game treats the first player much, much better than everyone else. Yeah, because it is only the first player to visit the island who gets access to all the game's features. That seems weird. (laughs) See, cap Capitalism, they're living in a classist society. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's all I gotta say. Yeah, everybody else has to depend on the first player to complete tasks. Like, in the beginning, when you have to donate five creatures to Tom Nook before the other parts of the game open up, if you played the game, you know that's important because you gotta get Tom Nook those creatures before you can get stuff like the axe. But if you're sharing a Switch, that doesn't happen until the first player gets off their lazy ass and catches some bugs. Nice. So dumb. Poster named Sketch (laughs) on Reset Era, who is playing the game with their girlfriend, compiled a list of all the stuff that player twos can't do. They don't seem to get new DIY recipes, they aren't asked to help upgrade the island, they aren't invited to participate in new projects, they can't help player one with their island projects, and they aren't allowed to check in progress projects to see what resources are needed. Ugh. So they basically just farm resources for player one is what it sounds like? <laughs> yes, so, that yeah. sucks. They're just a oh, worker God. bee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Jesus Christ. Yeah, so Sketch made it clear that they love the game, but they wrote, I was really looking forward to sharing an island with my girlfriend friend and building it together. I wish I had known that Nintendo did this. I really hope they fix it or at least give us the option to give our co-villagers the ability to share island responsibilities with us. God, we get it, Sketch. You got a girlfriend. We get it. Stop talking about it. What else feel bad? I mean, this is kind of an aside, but I don't understand why Nintendo, I mean, I guess didn't want to show their asses before the game sold, but this is like a pretty big thing to not be clear about. They are the premier company for like, hey, here's something that you're going 
going to absolutely hate and has never yeah. been in games. Like, we don't need to add this. There's no precedent for this, but right. put it right. in this game. It's really bad and everyone hates it. Yeah, it sounds about right. They make great games. They just, like, a lot of the stuff they do around those games is mind-boggling. Yeah, they have a history of low-key doing sort of crappy stuff, like with the refunds where you can't cancel mm -hmm. pre-orders. With yeah. Amiibos, sometimes they have, like, exclusive content locked behind them. So Nintendo is not always as cute and cuddly as they act. Totally. I mean, even with this thing, like, beyond this, you can't cloud save because of reasons. It's like, yeah. <laughs> like, can't you just figure it out? I mean, I know it's not, probably not that simple, but I think they build themselves into weird technology that they then can't really, like, work around as right. easily as, yeah. like, Sony and Microsoft, but who knows? So, yeah, it seems like the second player can't do a lot besides gather stuff, unless, of course, you get another Switch or another copy of the game, Sneaky, Sneaky Nintendo, which actually, yeah, you have to get another Switch to get another copy of the game, right? Because you can only have one island per Switch anyway. Oh, man. And cue the review bombs, which we will hop into in a second. But first, we want to give a big ol' thank you to ExpressVPN for showering us in that sweet, sweet cash. Not once, but twice today. I'm gonna hump for them, too, while they yeah, shower me okay. with cash. Thank you. <laughs> hey, everybody. So we all know how VPN protects your privacy and security online, right? But I didn't know this until recently, and it's taken my TV watching game to the next level. But guys, you can use a VPN to unlock movies and shows that are only available in other countries, which is pretty awesome. Because like, for example, over the weekend, I used ExpressVPN to binge watch Brooklyn Nine-Nine on Canada Netflix. It was so simple, I just fired up the ExpressVPN app, changed my location to Canada, refreshed Netflix, and there it was. I could uh, binge watch a great show like Brooklyn Nine-Nine. So what happens is ExpressVPN hides your IP address and it lets you control where you want sites to think you're located. You can go through the UK's Netflix library. You can go through Germany's Netflix library. You can go through France's Netflix library. What do you think France has? Probably some great stuff. If you love anime, you can use ExpressVPN to access Japanese Netflix and be spirited away. But it's not just Netflix. ExpressVPN works with any streaming service like Hulu, BBC iPlayer, YouTube, you name it, they can get past those uh, tricky things keeping you from watching other countries' stuff. There are hundreds of VPNs out there, but the reason I use ExpressVPN to watch shows is it's really fast, there's never any buffering or lag, and you can stream in HD, no problem. But generally, I think this is one of the fastest VPNs I've ever used. ExpressVPN is also compatible with all of your devices, phones, media consoles, smart TVs, and more. So you can watch what you want on the go or on the big screen, wherever you are. So if you visit my special link right now at expressvpn.com slash inside, you can get an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. Support the show, watch what you want, protect yourself at expressvpn.com slash inside. Thank you very much, ExpressVPN, for sponsoring today's episode. All right, so what about those nasty review bombs? So while the game got a stellar 91 review score on Metacritic, its user score is a much more humble 6.3 out of 10. Last time we checked, of the more than 1,500 ratings, about a third were negative. Oof. Oh, that's actually really bad. A lot of <laughs> Jesus. So, Brian, why are people review bombing? We know a lot of the times review bombs are done for sometimes, let's say, petty reasons, to be nice. But in this case, players really do have a legitimate complaint. A lot of mm -hmm. them are for from people who love the franchise. They say they love it. They just want to be able to play with their friends. So there was one player, TB726, who wrote, it's obvious Nintendo is just trying to sell more Switch consoles. This means only one person in your family can enjoy the game to its fullest extent. I had to delete my save so my brother could enjoy the game. Oh, that's a nice sibling. Yeah, good for him. Yeah, holy sh**. That's so nice. I would have told my brother to f off. Yeah, traditionally, <laughs> we would just give them an unplugged controller. Yeah, right, say, yeah. You, are you can play. <laughs> play in five years when I'm sick of this game. Or your mom sets an egg timer that you don't pay attention yep. mm -hmm. to at all. So yeah, another reviewer, KC 1994 wrote, Nintendo is being very greedy in limiting the gameplay like this. Who do they think people are that they can, just like the average person can just go out and buy another $300 console? I know, console? it's insane. Yeah, and a $60 game? Yeah, like, yeah, like it, it's crazy to me that even pre-ordering the Animal Crossing exclusive Switch, it didn't come with the f***ing game. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, right? Come I don't know, on. like, I'm spending $300 on it. Can't even throw me a bone. This also kind of shows the difference between the Switch and other Nintendo handhelds like the 3DS and the DS. There's obviously a lot more sharing involved with the Switch because one, it's much more expensive than a regular handheld and it can also function as a traditional console where everybody just grabs a controller and plays. But it appears that Nintendo wants everyone to buy their own Switch, at least when it comes to Animal Crossing, because it doesn't seem like it would be that hard to give everyone 
own their own island, or at least give other players more freedom on the same island. Yeah, at the very least. Why like, can't you just yeah. do that? Can I talk to Tom Nook <laughs> about my bridge? Like, please? Yeah, plus, even if people wanted to buy their own Switch, it might be kind of hard to find one these days, because everyone's playing a lot more video games while they're quarantined, and the portable Switch is all of a sudden in even higher demand than it was before. Yeah, here in the US, Switches are sold out at a lot of major retailers like GameStop, Target, and Best Buy, and on Amazon, looks like supplies of a lot of Switches and Switch lights are running low too. <gasps> also, those prime delivery days are like a month out. Yeah, they have that option right now that's like, oh, if you check this, we'll deliver it when we can so we can get people other stuff first. And I was like, fine. And now I'm like, why did I do that? Sorry for people who need food and medicine. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Spokesperson told The Hollywood Reporter what, Brian? Yeah, this came from Nintendo. They said Nintendo Switch hardware is selling out at various retail locations in the US, but more systems are on the way. We apologize for any convenience. They have said in the past though that shipments of switches would be delayed because of the coronavirus that it was inevitable so i'm uh, not sure it, there there might be a little bit of a, a a wait for people who haven't bought one yet but back to animal crossing it's not clear if nintendo will make any changes to the game based on this outcry some media members have reached out for comment but so far we haven't seen anything i'm gonna say they won't like when has nintendo no. ever changed <laughs> anything that people are mad about no. like they don't Never. give a yeah. shit i'm complaining right. about having to have bought a whole other switch that didn't come with the game but i still bought it and i'm like playing yeah, exactly. it every day because exactly. it's great that's nintendo's like whole business moves yeah. like you dumb mother yeah <laughs> they're gonna buy it anyway <laughs> they're kind of like the one monopoly left in video games they're like i'm sorry yeah. if you want to play mario and zelda games you gotta deal with yeah, us that's sorry. true i'm in an abusive relationship with nintendo and i'm okay with it <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah it's also possible that the game's content schedule might have to be adjusted because of the disruption caused by the coronavirus the game's director aya kiyagoku told the washington post a few days ago that we're not sure if we have to shift anything, but I think we have to be flexible. I feel like yeah. everyone's lives right now are kind of just like taking an hour at a time. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Yeah, but over there, apparently they're still working because they said oh, the Japanese God. development team is still working in the office every day, but their hours have been changed so they can basically avoid all the crowded trains. So oh. that's very nice of them. Wow. Well, I think they Whatever. would rather die working than die uh, not working. So it sounds like to me. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, even if there is a fix coming, could take a while. Again, everything is so up in the air right now just in terms of life in general so yeah. if you're looking for a fix or even if you're looking to buy a new switch man you better sit down and do something else thoughts and yeah. prayers yeah, yeah. <laughs> better learn how to read i was just gonna say read some of those books Loser. on your shelf you fucking faker patrick these all are hollowed out and have a gun in them every single one <laughs> they're all hollowed out and they have vhs porn <laughs> i feel attacked by that last comment hey welcome back to inside gaming daily for friday Friday, we are quarantined here in LA, but that doesn't mean we can't just give a big ol' yes, Brian? Yes! <laughs> yes! That's right, folks. Brian's face is on camera. 